Hi everybody, it's Julie and this month I wanted to do a product overview of the Gunzai Tombi Starry Colors. These are by Kudatake Zig and let me tell you, these are the most gorgeous, yummy, shimmery, metallic-y, golden watercolors you'll ever find. Ever. <laughs> They're absolutely stunning and yummy. They come in a beautiful range of six colors here in this palette. Um, they've got a yellow gold, a red gold, a blue gold, a champagne gold, a light gold, and a white gold. And I wanted to mention that the pans are the same size as those that come in the traditional uh, 36 color palette or the 24 palette, um, 12 count palette. So if you wanted to, you could actually swap out some of the colors in the other palettes and then swap some of the starry colors in if you wanted to take, you know, a range of colors and bring along the starry colors for good measure. I also wanted to do a comparison of how well they showed up on watercolor paper and also on black cardstock. So here you can see I'm just testing out that very first color. This is the blue gold and isn't that stunning? It is so gorgeous. I'm going to clean off my water brush in between each color so that I get a nice accurate uh, example of what each color looks like. These things are so creamy and smooth. I added some water using a dropper tool um, just to get them activated and then I just stirred my uh, brush nib down in there and got it mixed up and then started painting. And my brush is a little bit uh, wetter than I, I would have liked or maybe I put too much water in there so I'm kind of trying to mop it up a little bit and dry it up a little bit so I'm not quite so heavy with the water. But anyway, you can adjust, of course, how opaque or how translucent these colors are going to show up with the amount of water that you're using. And the Gansai Tombi Starry Colors are used for calligraphy work, for sumi brush painting, for brush lettering, and for uh, you can just straight up watercolor with them or paint with them. You can also add them over the top of um, already painted watercolor work. So here you can see just freshly painted. I'm tilting them in the light so you can see the shimmer and here's a straight on shot. I wish, like I said, I could capture it with my camera. They're just absolutely stunning and I just can't get enough of them. I just want to paint a whole stack of uh, cards in these colors and just use all of them all the time. I also wanted to do a comparison of the metallics that come in the 36 color palette of Gunzai Tombi and you can see those on the far left and the far right and those are more matte metallic. They do have some shimmer to them. The starry colors are definitely have more shimmer and they're different hues so it's not like you're getting duplicates of the metallic colors that are in the 36 color palette. So if you were concerned about that um, be aware that these are different um, and pretty uh, significant difference when you compare them. So anyway, just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. The next thing I wanted to try was to see how well they would mix with uh, the colors, the traditional colors in the 36 color palette. So I just chose a green and I added that same green to each of the little uh, wells here in my porcelain palette. And then I added a different gold color to each of those and mixed them in because I wanted to see what would happen to that green depending on which gold starry color I added to it. And then I started to paint them onto my little scraps of watercolor paper here. And one thing I noticed was that um, I did have to go back and remix just before painting. I had to remix it because the starry uh, gold color, the mica, was separating from the color. And so I wasn't getting a really shimmery green. It just kind of looked like green sitting there. And when you look at the other colors on the left-hand side there, they just look like they're regular green. But there's actually, um, the starry colors have kind of drifted down to the bottom of the well and so I'm having to remix it again. Now I ended up with some very pretty effects. They're very translucent and shimmery but certainly you can adjust that by adding more of those mica pigmented uh, starry colors um, and adjust that. So it's something to play around with if you want to try mixing your own colors and get some shimmery paints that way. Um, I also wanted to find out uh, what would happen if I just wanted to highlight a certain uh, watercolored uh, color with um, direct um, color on my water brush. So I just went after they were all dry, heat set them, and then I went and loaded a drier tipped brush there and cleaned, 
cleaned off my brush, of course, in between switching colors, but it's kind of fun to see um, how they show up over the painted watercolor. So you can definitely highlight things or completely obliterate them, I think, with um, depending on how much of it or how thickly you apply it. But anyway, I just thought it was fun to play around and see what happens. And you're going to want to do that when you get your hands on these because they're so fun. And then I was so just so excited. I just wanted to start making cards right away. So I grabbed some black cardstock. And the first idea I had was to take the leaf from the Mondo Hydrangea set. I wanted to emboss it in platinum embossing powder. This is by Hero Arts, this embossing powder. And I thought it would really accent the gold colors. Like it would outline the image, but it wouldn't overpower those gorgeous shimmery colors. So I'm just painting right over the top and it goes pretty fast. You might want to use a little bit of a drier brush when you're painting on regular 80 pound cardstock because it's really not designed to handle lots of water, gobs of water. So, but you can see here just how well they show up and I sped it up so that you wouldn't have to you know stick a fork in your eye while you're watching me paint. But isn't that pretty? I thought those rose gold sequins by Pretty Pink Posh really set off the colors too on that particular design. The next thing I wanted to do was to just see how well the yellow gold would show up on a black watercolored night sky. So this was inspired by uh, a painting I had seen on Pinterest and I wanted to kind of recreate that same effect. So I uh, did a black watercolor wash and then I intensified the color at the top and painted the gold stars by hand over the top. And then I die cut this Paris skyline from my favorite things on black cardstock and just wash some more gold over it. But here you can see what it looks like. I used a bit of a drier brush so that I wasn't diluting um, the color and had pretty opaque uh, dots and stars there. On my final card, um, I just did some orbs. Again, I embossed those with, these are the bokeh dots. I call them orbs. They just make me think of, you know, little planets. <laughs> So I am heat embossed those with uh, the Hero Arts Platinum Embossing Powder again, and then I added clean water um, where I wanted to put down some color, and then I loaded my brush with some color and then just floated it into the water and let it kind of move around. And in some cases, I came back and added more. Like here, I just went with the white gold, and then I was like, you know, that's kind of not showing up very well. I wonder if I could get a pewter color out of this. So I grabbed my little black pan of color from my 36 palette of Gunzai Tambi and just started adding some black and then came back in with a little bit more of the white gold. And I ended up with this really fun uh, kind of a combination of a pewtery onyx um, effect. But anyway, it was just fun to play around with them. And after that was dry, I spattered some black paint on it and embellished it. And it was super quick and easy, but I just love how sophisticated these cards look. They're very neutral, but they're just so elegant with those shimmery colors, and I just can't get enough of them. We have more still shots and further details available at the In Touch newsletter blog, so be sure to stop by and check out the archives there. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com, and thanks for watching.